Hoi there, Sky Ridge Shield. Welcome to Football Talks. Today I'm with Bill yet again, and we're going to talk about week one. Say hello, Bill. Yo, what is up? But before we actually get to week one, we well, this is kind of week one related news. We have two interesting things to note. Well, three, but I don't know if we'll talk about this one. The biggest news is apparently Wes Welker got suspended for what was it again? Four weeks. Four weeks for PEDs. Damn. Amphetamines. Oh, way to go. That's I don't know if that'll be a big dent on the offensive drive. Peyton has other uh, choices. To to be honest, the team was built around Peyton Manning, so a uh, receiver not being there is really not going to dent him. You yeah. Know, now it, if he's gone, then the whole team's going to collapse on itself. If the whole team's going to go two and fourteen, if Peyton Manning's gone, Wes Welker being gone, he. I mean, to be fair, I mean, he could get injured tomorrow and have a you know be gone for sixteen weeks or twelve weeks or anything. So the the offense is already learned under Payne Manning. It's just, you know, having a good slot receiver is a hard thing to find because not a lot of guys are crazy enough to run up the middle of the field and get their heads taken off on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. Well, and, there is that. So that's the Broncos-related news. But the other things yeah. that are interesting is that Michael Sam didn't make the Rams, which I think is a stupid idea that's going to bite them in the ass. To to be fair, in a way, they have they have a lot of defensive line help, and that that's a thing that they uh, uh, don't really need. So he was in a position of being in a in a horrible situation for trying to make the team. Mm-hmm. But I like the, the stuff he showed. I mean, they're highlighting him above all else, but that might have been because he was a pick, a draft pick. I, th I think part of the reason why he was being highlighted is because he's a transformative figure in sports. You know, and lo uh, love him or hate him, you know, he's a transformative figure in sports. Young, openly gay, and trying to play what is considered the man's man's sport, you know? Even though everything in it is not, is questionable, really. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you look where the quarterbacks put in their hands constantly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, j uh. I'm just glad the mainstream people aren't seeing this, because, oh god, this would have blown up into something much worse people spreading propaganda that he didn't make it in because he's gay but um, oh. and then he went to a team that goes to a state that is one of the most homophobic out there and that is the big news of the day yeah apparently he he's either signed or getting signed I don't know I keep finding conflicted sources saying he might get signed or he is getting signed or he's already signed so I'm gonna go it into the assumption he is going to be signed. It's an ongoing situation, but it really makes sense what the Dallas Cowboys are doing right there because they need help on defense. They need every body, every body that they can get on the defensive side of that football. I mean... I know. And then they've lost, I think they lost, I think what, this is what my grandpa was telling me, I don't know if it's true, but um, Orlando Skandrick got, is not going to be able to play because he got domestic violence. I think he's also out for four weeks, I don't know. I know the NFL's really strict, especially when it comes to domestic violence. I'm just surprised they didn't fire him on the spot. If what he's saying is true, but. Right. Yeah. So you've lost another player. You already have uh, Sean Lee still out on injuries. He's getting injured so much more than he should. That's bad. And then there's another player, I'll... but I don't remember who it was. I mean, uh, when your when your corners is out, I mean, it's just Dallas is in a 
big time bad spot. You thought last year's defense is was really bad. This year's defense, I I I would not want to be in the city of Dallas in about December. Let's just put it that way. I think, I, and a lot of the blame is going to go towards Tony Romo, and it's going to be undeserved because he's on be probably the only reason why one uh, they get any wins this year. Mm-hmm. That's a shame. It's always people blame the figurehead. It's easier to blame the leader than a group of people. Uh, I I foresee that the Dallas head coach is going to get fired this year. I see Tony Romo probably going to be having a number one quarterback picked, and get and, and Jerry Jones is uh, bow down to the pressure, and he's gonna uh, pick Jameis Winston number one overall, and that's a quarterback, and it it could snowball for Tony Romo. I mean, just because he signed a hundred million dollar deal doesn't mean that it's safe in the NFL. Yep, he has to live up to every dollar of it if he can. But again, it's not going to be his fault, most likely. I think it's going to be the defenses, but nobody wants to blame the defense. They like to blame the icon of the team. Exactly. It's surprising that even when the Texans were failing, I'm surprised they didn't start blaming J.J. Watt. But I think everybody knows he's paying his dues somewhat. Maybe not as much as last year, but he's still paying. But even so, well, I think people find it easier to blame the quarterback. I mean, look at what happened to Matt Schaub. In theory, he was probably one of their best players last year. And he he was run out of town. I mean, literally run out of town. I mean, literally people are going up to his house. And it's, it's insane to think that way because literally the team can only do so much they're going to go 2 and 14 look at my lions they went 0 and 16 you didn't see us going and uh you know trying to burn down uh you know whoever the quarterback was during that god awful year but you didn't see us trying to burn down his house or come towards anyone's house or you know where they're staying I think they just, at just, that point they were accepting of the fact that the team sucked at the t at the d back in we the day. We we just we just wore bags over our heads in the stadium, and chanted "Fire Millen" because we knew who it really was and it was the GM that needed to go, not. And then by by proxy, the players that the GM picked all left as well because they were garbage. <laughs> hmm. So, there's that. Oh, fun fun fact. The backup quarterback for the Lions this year is the only remnant of that 0-16 team. You're kidding me. That's surprising. Dan Orlovs Dan well, Orlovsky is back in Detroit. Well, uh, the same... What? The same Dan Orlovsky that ran out of, uh, out of the back of the end zone and got a freaking uh, safety scored on him. Uh, th th it's just bad stuff. But speaking of good stuff, though, so, J.J. Yeah. Watt. J.J. Watt got a six-year extension for, I believe, $100 million. 56 of it is guaranteed around there. If I remember reading that on Tumblr today. Right, there, and there are pictures of him signing the contract too. Pretty sure there are videos of it. Which I'm glad for. Be, you know what for would life. be? Yeah, heck yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure he he's going to be. I think he's on pace to go, win Defensive Player of the Year this year. I really do. I expect I, uh, Jadavian Clowney to be Rookie of the Year for defensive wise. It it would not surprise me. And I'll I'll tell you what the Texans defense is going to be better than it was last year, and the Texans defense last year really didn't let them down either. Mm -hmm. It was purely offense. I think the, one of the things was, and it's still prominent today. And this is what I think is a bigger thing than working on your team. Flags. I remember yeah. when they. Th I think it was when they played the Falcons. In a single drive, when they were going three and out, they had five flags on them. It does not. 
It, that does not surprise me. That's the and, biggest mistake for them right now, that they're so... What's the word I'm looking it, for? They're shooting themselves in the foot. They are, but it's, I think, especially considering this is a professional game, so many errors should not be happening in a single drive. Right. And it's also the same case with the Cowboys. When they could have had a chance to stop the um, the Dolphins, the reason why that drive, that winning drive, kept going was because they kept getting flags. So it kept becoming automatic first down, they had chances, and that just wore away the defense. It did. So as you see, that's both of their problems really, but I see it as a thing for the Texans. More so, <laughs> I mean the offense did okay, if they didn't get those flags. I think they might have won a couple of their games in the like it last year, but I don't know. So JJ Watts hmm. at least getting signed, so that's good news. But going back to the the Michael Sam, I'm really hoping that what I think he will debut. I think the only reason they're not putting him in a in a, in the main team yet, I think they just wanted to settle in with the team and see where it goes. Right. I mean, what are you gonna say? I, I, I mean, I can see that happening. Yeah, I can only hope. I think people will be will not be complaining about this, but again, these are changing times, and there are people who are for them, and then there are people who are really against them. So I wonder right. once once they debut him, how will people receive him here? I I have no doubt that I, the owner and other players will defend Michael Sam, even though he can clearly defend himself. I'm not I, saying he's I frail. Ju I just hope that. Everyone gives him a warm welcome. He he deserves it, and all the put. It doesn't matter, you know. It won't matter once he proves his worth. Exactly. It does, but in the end, it shouldn't matter in the first place. That he's a good player. He deserves to be there, no matter what sexual orientation he is. That's period. The, that's what I want too. But sad to say. This is football, and especially in the southern areas, that shit's still not accepted, and it's going to take a long time. Oh, don't believe me. It, there's been more... There's been more gay players than they probably ever have realized or known. And I know. Some of their, and some of their kids are just in this, in that way as well. You know, they just... They live in fear in the South, and why do you think? I, it's, why do you think I say so much bad things about the place? I don't. <laughs> I don't like the the general ideology. If you're different from us, you don't deserve to be here. So well, okay, I kind of don't want to be there anyway. But right. yeah, I mean, it's a really the guy. The what? You, you, everyone has to accept everyone for who they are. That's just plain old fact. I know, and I know we would try to apply this to to regular, like on a normal basis with regular people in in a typical society, just meeting person to person, coworker, and all that. But this seems to apply to everything. Video gaming, which is also seeing its fair share of controversies right now, and sports especially, especially if you get figureheads in the media, not like actors, musicians, and now sports players. That really will impact the younger generations that are looking up to them and learning from them. So if they, but if they do, whether or not they have the same sexuality as them, they'll be accepted regardless, because they're already, there's already a sign for them that they have hope, thanks to people like Michael Sam and whatnot. So right. that's why I'm thinking, even if the Cowboys fans get all whiny and homophobic, I think they will shut up once he gets like that first sack or two. And really Just, shows his worth. Uh, he'll, I think he'll be one of their best, one of their best players on the defensive line this year. And that, uh, you can mark it down that I said it, and I hope, I hope that I'm correct. I hope he gets ten sacks this year. I want him to really stay. I think he makes perfect sense with the, uh, the Cowboys. I remember the the people in the draft were saying he looks like he's most he's fitable with the. 
te- the Cowboys, the Lions, and I forget who the third team was. I want to say it was Seattle or uh, or Indianapolis, but yeah, I think he'll I think he'll stay. I just don't think he'll play the first game because against the 49ers, that's a really I think they could see that as a really tough match to make your guy just get suddenly thrusted upon into. So I think they're going to wait Correct. for another week with either a division rival or a minor team like the Rams. I think they play the Rams next week or the week after. So, haha, revenge. They play a they play a bunch in the NFC West right off the bat. Yep, we've got 49ers and they have the the Rams on the second or third week. Then of course they have Seattle. But we'll get to that when we get to the week things. When we get to week one. Oh man. Yeah, but now right. we have the final thing I wanted to talk about, the predictions. What we're gonna do right now is see as of it's similar to what we did with the with our teams, but we're gonna go with a whole uh every division, possibly wild cards if we want to take a shot at it. I think right. I think we can guess at least three or four that are possible. Getting only two is really tough and hard to think about. I think thinking of the general area might give might sound a little sensible, but so three or four maybe is fine. But we're gonna okay. definitely get each division's team, or like All that's right. going on. But like I said in the last video, getting into the playoffs does not matter this season. Just winning one game is what's going to matter more. It's like oh they made it to the playoffs, but they got wrecked by some a certain other team that was playoff oh, that man. was like Super Bowl bound potentially. Because yep. this, this season's going to be, I think, one of the toughest I've ever seen. Either that or I'm just really starting to pay attention to the game now. It's, it's going... Every every team has a chance at winning this year. All 32 teams. Even the Oakland Raiders. People might think I'm crazy for saying it. Well, 31 teams have a chance of winning. I don't see how Dallas is getting more than one win this year. <laughs> or Washington. I, Washington might be better. It all depends how RG3 plays, but I, I, I see a downward trend for him. But we don't want to start there, do we? Yeah. Do you, want to, do you want to start in the NFC or the AFC? Which do you think would be better? I think we'll... Well, uh, let's go AFC. Yeah. Let's okay. talk about the... Um, let's go with AFC North. AFC North. Okay. So, uh, the AFC North consists of Cincinnati Bengals, Pittsburgh Steelers, Baltimore Ravens, and Cleveland Browns. And all four teams are really good. All four teams have pretty stingy defenses. And three out of the four teams have decent offenses. Not the best offenses, but decent offenses. So, it comes down to me who's been there before. And two teams really have been there before in the last couple years. Cincinnati and Baltimore. And between the two, I see the Cincinnati Bengals winning the AFC North. You see, I actually agree with you, but there's something I want to note. The Browns, I don't I don't think they'll make the playoffs, but I really think they're going to get... They, based on what you were saying last time, I think the Browns are going to really push these guys. But... Even with Manziel, I don't see them making it in just yet. I think they're going to take another year of, like, a bitter defeat, but they're going to do a lot. It's going to be less, considering I think they're going to win more games, but I don't think we should spend time trying to guesstimate what they're going to get. Right. What, like, I, can see Pittsburgh being, I, can, I can see Pittsburgh being in fourth place this year. Really? That's mm-hmm. I, I don't know who's going to get fourth place because I don't know how the Ravens are going to stack up. Are they going to learn their old ways and stick to them? Because the the Pittsburgh Steelers are trying to go back to that Iron Curtain philosophy. And that's what made them really scary. I was really scared for the Cowboys when they played them. And sure enough, I was right. When they played them, Cowboys got like three or four people injured that on that game. That's minimum. Uh, only, I'm pretty sure there might have been one or two more. So it's the only way to play defense, though. So. <laughs> it is, and that that's what made them scary back in the day. Now they're really trying to retrace those steps. 
and follow that so, same philosophy again. A dominating defense that just destroys their offense. While, meanwhile, yours is going to have a t an easy time sailing through their defense. Right. So, so who we knows? Both per so we both predicted Cincinnati. Ooh. Yep, I'll oh, let man. you pick the next one. All right, we'll do the AFC West, oh, which no. consists of Kansas City, Denver, San Diego, and Oakland. Jeez, I wonder who will win this division. Uh, the Denver Broncos will win this division quite handily. Uh, I think Kansas stays on take a step backwards and finish in third. I can see San Diego being in second. And Oakland will be a good team, and they'll still fire their head coach, even though he did well. And they're going to finish in fourth, but I really hope that I'm wrong and they finish in third or second, because the Raiders have been through so much. Um, you know, I, I, I want to see them do well. I, I, this is talk from one fan to, uh, from one fan to another. You know, Oakland's been where Detroit has been. And they, they they need to get out of that basement dwelling They're stuff. The, they are pretty much the lions of this era. Last decade, yeah. the lions were at in that point. So yeah. who knows? I mean, I agree with you though. I think the Broncos are gonna get in, but I just get this feeling that I'm gonna be wrong. I really hope I'm just overthinking it here. Okay, <laughs> so let's go parallel that. We had the West, right? Let's go to the East. Oh, man. So, AFC East, hmm. New England Patriots, Miami Dolphins, New York Jets, Buffalo Bills. That's and no surprise. I, I, can, I can see uh, New England going absolutely hog wild in this division. They look scary in all phases of the game. And I like and, it. I mean, all, all, I, all I hope and this is paralleling the f other video last week, is that the jo uh, the New York Jets go 1-15 in and that Rex Ryan cries. And he gets fired. I want, I want to see him cry tears of butter down his cheeks. Go oh, please. I'm going to go with the Patriots. Like I said, they're going to have a good season. How many losses did I predict? Two or three. It wasn't that many for these guys. Right. I think you predicted, like, two losses. We both were 14 and 2. Okay. I, I, see, I see them as the top seed in the AFC. Oh, yeah. Broncos aren't going to get an easy schedule either. Hell no. There, they'll be second seed in the AFC, though. I, I can see that happening. Yeah. But there's one division left in the AFC. AFC South. Let's lay it on me. The AFC South is Indianapolis Colts, Houston Texans, Tennessee Titans, or Jacksonville Jaguars. I think you just ordered and... it the way I expected it to turn out. <laughs> it, it could very possibly turn out that way. I, I, can, I can see any of the three teams there taking second place, but I see Indianapolis taking first place, and any of those other three teams can take second very easily. Very easily. And whichever team's in second could very easily make the playoffs. I don't think too. the Colts will last long, though. I think they're just uh, going to get I, taken out in the first round. I, I think it's a New England... Uh, Denver AFC title game. That's that's what it's shaping up to I be. Just, I just hope that uh, Patriots or NFC or uh, the AFC uh, number one seed, so they get home right. field advantage. They need that, especially to truly knock out the 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 Broncos. They need all right. the support they can get. So you're you're predicting for the AFC South? Yes, I I said the way you ordered the teams is how I see it oh. turning out. Oh, okay, I gotcha. The luck, oh, or luck's gonna help get the Colts a one extra, the one needed win over another division team. They're gonna beat the Titans twice. They're gonna beat the uh, the Jaguars twice, and they're gonna beat the Texans once. However, the Texans are gonna lose to the Jaguars once. 
I predict that's going right. to happen. So, right. that's what's going to help them, and along with, even if there's, I mean, you can get in against somebody, even if they have a better schedule over you, especially if you beat them twice, I know that. Priority, right? Right, yeah. So, even if they're like one loss more over the, compared to the Texans, they'll still get in, because I think they have the better, the better division record might say enough. Right, yeah. But, um, right. Let's go to the a NFC. Which one do you want to do first? I'm I'm thinking uh, everyone, the one everyone wants to talk about now. Oh, you're talking about the NFC South. <laughs> no, Bill. I'm talking NFC. The new NFC East. And oh by my East, God. I mean West. The NFC, the NFC East. You want to start with the East? I was saying the new NFC East. That's the West. Oh, okay, so you want to start with the West, okay. Oh man, the Rams, the 49ers, the Seahawks, the Cardinals. What do you got? Oh. My. God, is all I can say about that division. I mean, literally, those are four playoff teams right there. I mean, seriously. And it's a shame that only, uh, theoretically, only three can make it. But I, I'm going to, I'm going to really hate myself for saying this, because I really, really like the Arizona Cardinals to win this division. But I am going to predict that the CL Seahawks are going to win the division in a tiebreaker with the Arizona Cardinals. Wow, you see, I actually see things a little differently. I don't expect the Seahawks to make it in. There's this big trend that it seems once you win a Super Bowl, you can't make the playoffs again for whatever. God knows what. I'm assuming it's the really tough schedule enforced on them. But they yeah. don't have a not-so-tough schedule. They got easy wins against the NFC East. <laughs> but I don't know how they're going to... I think it's just going to come down to division games. And I think this. I think the 49ers are going to get in, actually. As much as I hate to say it, because I hate the 49ers... They're going to get in. I actually see them being really mean, but I could be wrong. I mean, the 49ers, the Seahawks, and the Cardinals could all win the division. Hell, the Rams could even win the division, even with a second-string quarterback in there. Because, really, no one's going to score on anyone in that division. Mm -hmm. They all have really mean defenses now. Really good defenses. So, really scary good defenses. So let's move on to the actual NFC East. <laughs> the disappointment. The the disappointment? What used to be one of the most exciting? There, that'll be exciting in a different way if you like 58 to 45 games. Uh, Shootouts are always is, fun, though. This and the NFC North are the two divisions that... I mean, I can see... Okay, there's some audio popping up in the middle of that, so I'll cut that out. Bill, try and say what you were saying again. Basically, I'm just going to say that the NFC North is not going to be able to uh, play any defense and that they are going to uh, basically... Uh, it's going to be a shootout and that I think that the Philadelphia Eagles will win the division going like a eight. Because I can see that happening. They're probably going to be the worst, uh, the worst win-loss ratio team in the whole playoffs. I think eight and eight. That's yeah. a really low. Like that's what I've been saying. Getting in the playoffs is not going to mean much this year. Winning the game is what's going to matter. Exactly. I mean, and logically it does, but in this case, compared to who you're going up against, it's not going to mean shit. Right. But yes, I can see the Eagles getting in, but they're not going to last too long. They're probably, <laughs> I think by unfortunate fate, they're going to go up against a really tough defensive team and get shitted on hard. <laughs> but oh my god. I don't know who's going to get top seed. I want to say it's whoever wins the NFC, NFC West, probably. So, let's go to the South. Oh, the NFC South. The wide open NFC South. 
And there's three teams that I think can make a decent run at it. And it's the Saints, Panthers, and the Falcons. You heard me right, the Falcons. I think the Falcons will be much better this year. Uh, they won't be as banged up. The Panthers are took a step backwards. They have no one to throw the football to. And that just leaves Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints just sitting pretty and winning the division. Mm, that one, that one's tough. I don't know. I don't. I really just don't want the Saints to win because I hate the Saints. I don't know why I don't like them and the 49ers. I just really don't. I don't know why, but I, 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 I'm kind of having to agree with you, Bill. I think the Saints are going to get in. I'd rather the Panthers get in, though, so I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't like the... Oh, uh, man. I don't like the Saints. I really dislike them. So let's go to the final <laughs> NFC team. Oh, man. The NFC North, my home division, Lions, Bears, Packers, and Vikings... Vikings have no defense. The Green Bay Packers are a bunch of cheeseheads and have no defense. And the Bears, they have a good team, and they have a good offensive genius head coach. But the Lions, their their offense is one of the scariest things I've seen in a long time. And they play indoors, fast track, got five receivers that can catch the football, have an amazing trio of tight ends, and their young defense is looking like a scary defense. If they play like they played in the uh, in the preseason into the regular season, the Lions will win the division, and I predict a Lions winning the, uh, the Lions winning the division Buy a game over the Green Bay Packers. Interesting. Well, I actually want them to win too. I think that they are going to lose to the Packers only in the division. I've seen them beat. I've seen them beat the the Bears twice last year. I think they could do it again, especially since they're playing them once during Thanksgiving. That that's got to turn in their favor. I hope. I yeah. don't know if they'd make it all the way, though. I'm just not sure comparing to the um, uh, 49ers defense. I don't think they've ever played them rec in recent years. Uh, they played them in that infamous handshake game where Schwartz and uh, Harbaugh were getting ready to shake, and Harbaugh apparently shook Schwartz's hand too hard, and Schwartz took offense to that or something what like the fuck? that. When was that? Oh, man. I don't remember it happening. It was a few years ago. It was like two or three years ago. But I think it was in. Good? I think it was in the midst of their good season. In fact, it was. I really don't remember. Yeah. The year that they went ten and six and made the playoffs. <laughs> Wasn't it by a, <laughs> like a wild card? Yeah, they they were in a wild card and lost to the Saints in the playoffs. But still, they made the playoffs. That's all I care about. I know that's all you care about, Bill. And I'm hoping it happens again this time and that they get the division. Haven't had Seriously. that since 1993, I want to say. It's It's been a very long time since the Lions won the division. I mean, look at who they have had to play against in the division for quarterbacks. Drew Brett Reeves. Favre and uh, Aaron Rodgers just not fair, man. The I really Packers. want revenge against Drew Brees now with the with the Lions. Yep. I'm just imagining they're going to go up against them at, at, at come in uh, second round of the playoffs. Whatever it's it called. Could, they could go against could each happen. other. It could happen. But now we should are you done? Because now it's schedule time, right? Yep. Okay, Bill, go over, let's go over week one, and let's see who's going to win each game. All right, so, here we go. Me and you, there. All right, so, uh, the Thursday night game, the opening game, Green Bay at Seattle, and I see the Seattle Seahawks strangling the Packers' offense. 
Uh, but they barely win like ten to seven. Maybe the Seahawks. A, a low-scoring game like that in in the Seattle uh, place. Wow. I think it's going to be a clear Seattle win. Right. And they're they're going to get two interceptions off of the uh, the Green Bay Packers off of Aaron Rodgers. Heck yeah. Wait, what a All way right. to start the season. Next game. Let's go to Sunday. New Orleans at Atlanta Falcons. And I see the New Orleans Saints going into Atlanta and winning. Just mm-hmm. too much offense. You know, i kind of inclined to agree with you. Oh, I want the Falcons to win. Again, that oh, might, I might just be saying that because I don't like the Saints. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right, let's go to next, the next game. Next game, Minnesota Vikings at the St. Louis Rams. And they're playing against St. Louis, and the Minnesota Vikings still are struggling at quarterback. And, I mean, sure, the Rams are starting a second-string quarterback themselves, but they still have a better defense. I'm picking the Rams. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the Rams, because I don't think the Vikings have really figured out what they're going to do with themselves, really. (laughs) Oh, Oh, there was something I wanted to talk about, too. I forgot. It was about... Adrian Peterson still be really implying he wants to be with the Cowboys come retirement. All I'm going to say yeah. about it, I think that they might get him, but just for like one or two years and that's it. Yeah, it can just cost your Cowboys a draft pick, too. So, that's a thing. Well, but they have they have years to improve upon themselves, so they like, it's okay, <laughs> we can lose they a draft. Need all, they need all the draft picks that they can get right about now. <laughs> I know, but... They can't really trade while he's still in a contract. That's why I'm saying wait till his contract expires. By then, if they fix themselves, they can do it. But anyway, let's move on. Next game, Cleveland Browns at Pittsburgh Steelers. And I'm going with the upset special here with the Cleveland Browns starting out 1-0 and beating Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Well, are you saying this because you think Johnny Manziel is going to be there? No, Hoyer's starting. I think, I think Cleveland's Cleveland's defense is legit. Uh, they don't have Josh Gordon, but I think they have enough to play decently against the Steelers, and I think they can steal one. That was a bad pun. Just stop <laughs> yourself. Steal yourself. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the typical answer and say the Steelers. I think their defense is still better. Yeah, especially when we're talking at Steelers, but yeah, an upset. I can see an upset happening. Maybe not there, oh. but maybe in this week. But next game, oh. it's Jacksonville Jaguars at Philadelphia Eagles, and I think the Philadelphia Eagles are going to steamroll the new and improved Jaguars. The Jaguars are going to surprise people this year. I think the Eagles' fast-paced offense is just a steamroll and get that. Jaguar defense tired, and they're just uh, go crazy and score a lot of points. Well, you see, here's where I see an upset. I think the Jaguars are going to win. <laughs> oh, I think that uh, I think that um, Royals. That's the quarterback's name, right? Making sure. Uh, Nick, Fo- uh, oh, Nick, Nick Foles. Oh, Nick Foles. I'm thinking of somebody else then. Oh, well, whatever. Nick Foles is going to throw one pick six. Ooh. The one time he decides to throw the ball is going to be his undoing. <laughs> I I don't know why, but I have the feeling that's happening to him. I don't know if it's this game, but I think he's going to throw one key interception that's going to seal his game fate. Well, just that game. Whether it screws him out of the playoffs, I don't know. Depends how late it is. But Right. I, I am expecting a pick six. If not this game, some other game for him. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go to the next game. Raiders at Jets. And I I seriously now this is this is me being selfish. I want the Raiders to kill them. I want them to crush them. So, I'm picking Raiders. <laughs> you know, I'm really I'm actually with you there. I want 
Raiders to win. They've they're very uh they they're the new Lions. Yeah, they this. they deserve a winning season at least. Yeah, but I think they have one of the most roughest schedules too. I think they're going up against so many uh Super Bowl candidate teams. It's not even funny. They get the Broncos twice. <laughs> oh yeah, and I think they get the Patriots. I think they got the uh they got another playoff team. I don't remember, but oh well, we'll, we'll figure it out when the weeks go by. So let's All go right. to the next team. It's the Cincinnati Bengals playing in Baltimore against the Ravens. And I am going to pick the Baltimore Ravens. They're they're not as good as they used to be, but they can still play defense and they still got a decent quarterback and a decent offense. And both teams are about evenly matched, so I just picked the home team basically. Hmm. Here's another upset for me. Well, I wouldn't call it an upset. It's kind of expected. I think the Bengals are just going to shit on that that team. Oh. Reminding them that they've fallen from grace, but I also don't like the Ravens. I don't know why I don't like them either. Oh, man. <laughs> Actually, I do. It's because they always used to give they give they gave the Texans and the Cowboys a tough time back right. when I was in high school. So I'm like, fuck you. And then they won a Super Bowl. I guess it's one of those. Oh, they're to me they're overrated. They oh, they yeah. are a good team though. I will concede that. That's all I'm gonna say. Right. Next up, Buffalo Bills at Chicago Bears. I am. <laughs> That this one's easy. Chicago landslide win. <laughs> you don't even want to admit it, though. You wish that nah, they would I, beat the the Bears. I, I wish the Bills would beat the Bears, but it's not happening. Not this year. <laughs> Bears. Oh man! So next up, the Washington Redskins or the Washington Football Team and <laughs> the Houston Texans. What do you got, Bill? I am picking the Houston Texans because the Redskins or the Washington football team or whatever you want to call them are, just have no defense. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be fun. I know they're praising the Redskins for their improving offense, but I don't think that's going to mean shit to J.J. Watt and to Davian Clowney. Hell, True. I wouldn't be surprised if D.J. Swearinger got a few a few more blocked passes. I don't know if you get an interception off of it, but I expect some block passes from him. True. So you stop RJ3 on the rush and on the pass. Easy. Defensive win, if that makes sense. True. Next up, the Tennessee Titans at the Kansas City Chiefs. And I see the Chiefs playing defense and just... You know, just being an overall better team than the Titans. The Titans are still young. They're still learning. And I see the Chiefs uh, playing well and defeating them. They they need to figure out what they're going to do with themselves. So, yeah, Chiefs, who already decide what they plan to do, are going to win easily. Um, and here comes a laugher. The New England Patriots travel down to South Florida and play the Miami Dolphins. And the Patriots, uh, I, I, I just see them steamrolling the Dolphins. You say I think it might not be an easy win. I still see a win, but I don't think it's going to be as easy as you're saying. But let's go to the next game. It's the Carolina Panthers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Carolina is going to strangle the Buccaneer offense. I think. So, mm. Carolina. They may as well wave the white flag because Panthers are just going to wreck them. Next up at 425 is the San Francisco 49ers at the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. I actually told my grandparents if the Cowboys can somehow win, I'll let you rub it in my face as much as you want. But that is probably <laughs> not going to happen, and I kind of hope not now. Oh man, I I see I see this as a potential. This is one of those potential games where they might want to have a mercy rule because I I don't see how the Cowboys defense is gonna stop anybody. Oh yeah, 
So, obviously, you know who I'm picking. Not the Cowboys, the 49ers. I hate the 49ers, but I have to pick them. I don't think the Cowboys are going to win because their defense is shit. Their offense is going to be really roughed up from this, and I don't know how they're going to do from the season onward. If for their sake, they better not get any injuries because this is, this is the game where I... This just feels like the Steelers game for me, but they're just going to get roughed up. And that shouldn't happen right. until at least mid-season. But better now, I guess, so that way your team members might come back before when it, people really start to care for the games. But, hmm. yeah. Next, Next game. Next up, the Indianapolis Colts at the Denver Broncos. And I, I can see this being a high-scoring game, but I think Peyton Manning, Sunday night, bright lights, he'll open it up and win. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the Broncos, though they're just going to really get knocked down Andrew Luck. Oh, man. Okay. Now, the Monday night game, 7-10, the New York Giants coming into the Lion Pit to face the Lions. Lion Pit? Lion's it, Den sounds cooler, though. We've heard it no. so many times, it works. <laughs> Step oh, into man. the Lion's Den. I don't well, know. the Lion's Den, it... it I think the Giants are going to get mauled. Like I've said, I think Eli Manning's going to throw a shit ton of interceptions, and that offense is still not clicking, and their defense is not good. So Lions all the way, baby. No, that's good. I'm I'm with you there. Shame I can't see this game because it's on ESPN. I don't have cable. Bastards. Yeah. And then the final game of the week. San Diego Chargers at Arizona, and I see the Arizona Cardinals strangling the Chargers with amazing defense and a pretty good offense, so Arizona. Two things. One, why are there two Monday night games? And two, Arizona, but not by <laughs> much. Not by much. Uh, they, they gave ESPN two because NBC's got two. Wait, oh yeah. Wait, they have two s Sunday night football games this time? No, the, thir the Thursday night and the Sunday night. Oh. Both are on NBC. Then ESPN gets two. Wait, the Thursday night game? I thought it was on CBS. The Thursday night game is on NBC this week. Every other week after that is on CBS. Okay. So that's all the games. So, Bill. Yep. I hope you're ready for the first season. I'm looking forward to seeing where all of these teams are going to go. I can't wait. And hopefully you guys will enjoy this series as it continues on. Heck yeah. Yeah, so I think it's time we take our leave. Time to say goodbye, Bill. Bye, guys. All right, I'll see you guys later. So see you guys in another video. <laughs>